for the spring element of the, this course, the students have to curate a film series. And by that, uh, this sounds like a very simple sort of uh, way of looking at things that they just need to pick a series of movies that people want to watch. But uh, it gets more complicated because they have to actually do all the elements that it takes to actually show uh, a movie screening. How do I start DC Shores? That's a good one. Uh, I'm a filmmaker myself, and in 2001 I traveled around the world uh, chasing a short film I had made that played about 45, 50 film festivals. Uh, I was sort of disheartened at most of the festivals I attended. Uh, they seemed to be more about parties and sponsors and money than they were about films and filmmakers. And especially since I made short content, there wasn't a lot of attention paid to me or my films. Um, and I just, I, that isn't how I thought the festival circuit should be. The proposal that is going to be, or the film series that's going to be most successful is the one um, that has the most lucrative partnerships. If you ever go to a film festival around the city, you pick, you pick up a flyer, what do you see? What's that? Page of sponsors. Page of sponsors. Logos at the wazoo, right? Partners are the key. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, but programming is by far the key. It's what's, what distinguishes each film festival. Every festival has its own personality. Um, we're known for uh, a lot of humor, a lot of really insightful documentary, and some very harrowing dramas. And I think that's fantastic. And, uh, I asked the entire class to submit uh, uh, topic ideas, uh, a film series topic ideas, and uh, perhaps a sample selection of ideal films, what they might uh, go through to make that particular film series. And uh, they then, we, the class met amongst themselves and actually it became this sort of uh, battle royale between different and some very very interesting topics I have to say uh, uh, between what is uh, uh, all sorts of different different topic ideas. All right. yeah. Group one, <coughs> Nick, Caitlin, Kenny, Jonathan, restaurants and road trips. Sure, so if, uh, if you remember the, my idea of kind of adventure and road trip films with John's puppy and plates, and uh, obviously you couldn't do the puppies, so had the mind and said we're at restaurants and road trips. Last year, 2012, we did a DC Shorts had a chef film pairing series, where we tried to pair eight films with eight local chefs. They prepared some sort of dish based on their film or their thought of the film, which we served to an audience. And in theory, it was a great idea. Uh, execution, it didn't work nearly as well as we wanted to for a variety of reasons. Um, but it, it was something I've always wanted to try. I, you know, I feel that as a festival it's important to try new things every year. And the stuff that works, fantastic, you do it again. And the stuff that doesn't work, you evaluate, and if you can improve it, you do. And if you can't, you kill it, and that's, you said, you know, I tried, and that was it. John Lewis and Noah Miranda. Okay, so this film series is What's something that unifies everyone? Sleeping, breathing, eating. You have movies about eating, which is something everyone does. And the draw is that it's like you go have your meal and you watch your movie. And um, I know this is originally John's idea, so John, if you want to chip in at any point a little. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that the restaurants provides like, a lot of opportunity for us to get like sponsorship. Sorry, no, but, um, yeah, so we can get sponsorship from the restaurant, and then also the road trips provide a lot of opportunity because we can go to a place like North Face, we can go to a place like Patagonia. See, but what makes that any different than like, you know, okay, yeah. You say you have a lot of restaurants, but what restaurants do you actually well, And um, what's the actual chance that North Face would actually come and support? That's my well, question. No, okay, not, showing one of their One at a time. Group one, get them up high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, that's more than half. We have the majority. 
So, this is our idea, guys. Um, <laughs> restaurants and road trips. Can I, is that someone? Is, is that something that everyone can get behind? You guys feel comfortable with that? Okay, let's break up the two groups. They chose as their their topic restaurants and road trips, which uh, sort of is looking at road trip movies, which is a particular genre of film, and uh, movies about food, which has its own you know set of regulations, and yet also decided to bring in for some of their events. Uh, even with movies about road trips, they also chose to incorporate a food element to that. Well, I think the selections are interesting. Um, I would think that if you're going after a collegiate audience, you would go for some other road trip films like Vacation or you know, you know, whatever, National Lampoon's Vacation, yeah. or something along that lines. Um, but no, I think, I think they're great. I mean, I, I'm not a huge road trip movie fan, however, I love food movies. The ones you program for fabulous. To me, Big Night is it's one of my favorite films. Not only because it's a food movie, but I happen to just think it's a great brother story, and I love brother story films. Um, so that wor really works for me. And the sushi movie is fabulous. It made me want to get on a plane to go to Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> And keep the chit chat to a minimum during the movie. Also, I'd like to invite you for a post screening discussion, a quick word from Ecosense, and then. A raffle of the $100 Patagonia gift card, so please stick around. Thank you and enjoy the film. Fossil fuels are really bad for the environment. All of these issues have a very negative impact, but they're worse than most of the Don't disengage. Like, if anything, the time is now to get engaged. Join us on that Sunday, 25,000 people. It's a really big deal. That's, it's gonna be the biggest rally on the environment, like, in history. So if you wanna be a part of that and be in the history books 30 years from now, here's your chance. So I really enjoyed Ecosense coming to talk at the movie because as the on-campus environmental organization, I felt like this was a really good forum for us to connect with students. I thought the film was really powerful, but I also thought, I think, it's very easy when you see films like that to kind of like go like, wow, that's beautiful and that's really important and then not participate and not want to engage with it further. And so I thought it was a really good opportunity for us to come and say like, this is not you know so far away, it's not as far as Patagonia, it's here in DC and it's here on your campus. As of this particular interview, this seems to have worked really, really well. Um, there has been a lot of interest in these movies. Their movie choices also were I should say not, and happily I should say, were not exactly what I would pr have predicted. They're not the easiest movies. Um, you know, a, a documentary about uh, a, the, the world's greatest sushi chef is not something that you necessarily think uh, people would clamor to see, nor necessarily a documentary about uh, the, Pat the Patagonia guys going to Patagonia. Um, uh, is that going to really draw an audience? But it turns out that it did, and it uh, draw, drew a substantial audience, much bigger than I thought would actually happen. Um, and that uh, shows an interesting uh, that in the in their choices by actually going outside the box of what you might expect, it actually brought an audience in. It tells us something about, also about uh, programming for pr events like this. Uh, sometimes the obvious is not what you want, and sometimes the uh, the quirky actually will bring an audience in.